Welcome back. Uh, so far, we've had uh, quite the journey looking through the different uh, ways we can uh, develop, uh, go live, uh, manage releases, desktop applications, terminal applications. We've looked at uh, using Hyperswarm to create an ephemeral chat where two things, uh, two uh, peers can talk to each other. In this episode, we're going to look at replication and persistence. So we're going to use uh, another of the pair helper, uh, pair building blocks uh, called Hypercore. So Hypercore is about persisting peer-to-peer -peer state. Hyperswarm is about connecting peers together through a distributed hash table. DHT. So what we're going to do to break things down is we're going to create two applications, a writer application and a reader application. Uh, this particular setup is going to be a uh, single writer, but multi-reader. In future episodes, we'll look at how to do multi-writer as well. But let's start with this. So we'll start with the, the writer app. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to run pair init y t terminal, and that's going to generate a terminal app. Now that we have uh, the original contents of our app of our of the terminal template, uh, we're going to paste in something I have prepared. You can find this on our documentation under how to's and it's how to persist data with Hypercore. So the writer app, as we can see, it's importing Hyperswarm, Hypercore, Path and B4A. Um, terminal apps, desktop apps that run by pair supply a subset of uh, core APIs such as FS, Path, uh, a few different others. Uh, so the Path module is fairly essential for doing joins cross-platform. So we use that here to uh, join the pair.config.storage uh, to Path to uh, writer storage on line nine. This is where we're setting up a hypercore and saying, okay, hypercore, here's where we want you to store all of your state. The pair global is the pair API. And on the pair API, you have a config object. And on that config object, you have a storage string, which points to the platform application storage directory. Generally, you want to use this for any kind of um, Hypercore storage for your application. Then we're um, before before we set, we set up the Hypercore, we also uh, instantiate a new Hyperswarm, and we use the pair teardown uh, method, uh, another API method. You can find all API uh, pair API uh, details in the documentation, but pair teardown will call the function that's passed to it when the application is closing. In this case, we want it to destroy the swarm. So clean up after itself, basically. The next thing we do after we've created the core is we say, let's wait until the core is ready. So everything's all set up. And then we're gonna listen to uh, SDD in for inputs. We're gonna listen to those inputs and then we're gonna append those inputs to the core. So we're going to write data to the core directly from the command line STD in. The discovery key is then used to uh, join the swarm, the core discovery key, which is generated when you create the hypercore, as is the, the hypercore key itself, which is logged out also. Then anytime there's a connection, we pass the connection or the socket that's uh, handed to the, the listener function, and we call call replicate and pass that connection into the replicate function. Once we've done that, we have persistence on a local machine, and we have 
replication between this hypercore and any other hypercore that wants to connect over uh, hyperswarm over the distributed hash table. So on the other side of this, we're also going to create a reader app and then we're going to send messages from the writer app to the reader app so that the reader app can store those messages. So we're going to come out of this folder, cd dot dot, and then we're going to do make the reader app. And then we're going to cd into reader app. And we want to do pair in it y dash t short for type terminal. Create another terminal app. And again, in the documentation, how to persist data with Hypercore, uh, the same uh, index.js can be found. Uh, it's the counterparty to the writer app index.js. So again, we're importing path Hyperswarm and Hypercore. We're using uh, pair config storage to, uh, to determine where the hypercore should persist itself to. But notice that there's a second argument passed to hypercore in the reader app. And that's an argument that we're going to pass uh, based on the key that is output by the writer app. So the writer app is outputting uh, a key for, or, or a topic key if you like, and the reader app is gonna pass that topic key uh, into this new hypercore so that the new hypercore is uh, knows that it's reading from uh, that key. Again, we wait for the core to be ready uh, and uh, set up some uh, some swarm stuff. Uh, wait for the core to update. And then it's simply a case of uh, using this uh, create read stream, which is uh, a constant stream of incoming data uh, that's going to be sent, that's going to be replicated from the writer app to the reader app. And then it's just console, log app, console logging out um, the data that's, that's coming in. So let's, um, let's give this a whirl. We can run two, uh, these two applications using pair dev. To, to test out the functionality. So, on the writer app first, I'm going to run pair dev, and that's gonna output the hypercore key. In this case, the hypercore key has been printed out, and we're going to copy and paste that, and then go to the reader app, and run pair dev again to open the reader app. And the first thing the reader app says is skipping zero, skipping zero earlier blocks. There's no earlier blocks, there's nothing to skip, but uh, if we were to shut this app and then open it again later after doing some writes, it would skip the original blocks again. So now if I uh, write something uh, in the writer app terminal underneath where it's output the hypercore key. I can persist state locally and I can replicate that state to the reader app. So I'm going to say sup 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 hit return and now we can see that the uh, reader app has said writing a core block and it's output the position of that block which is going to be one here and it's output sub 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 as the data. So we've persisted data locally and we've replicated that data to another application and then that application has persisted that data as well. That's only de development but we can, these, these will, apps will work exactly the same way uh, if we stage seed and run them. 
So we can just do that quickly before we finish. So the writer app, we can simply say pair stage. We'll call it dev for now because I'm not ready for production really. So I'm staging the writer. I can go and then stage the reader as well, pet stage dev. I can go back and seed the writer. So now I'm doing pair seed dev in the writer app folder and that's seeding it with a key. And then I can go to the reader app. Same thing again, pair seed dev and that's seeding under a different key. And now we can test the uh, staged apps uh, on this machine using pair run. So for the reader app, I don't need to be in the reader app folder. I'm just going to go to my home folder and pair run. And I'm going to open the writer app first. So I'm copying the writer app key and I'm doing pair run with the key. And that's loading. Excellent. And now the reader app. And that's loading. So once the reader app loads, we should be able to uh, again send a message from the writer app to the reader app, and it should persist in uh, for the writer app. I'm going to do something like, uh, okay, okay, okay. And yet we can see that that's been appended. So now we have two terminal apps that are using Hypercore and Hyperswarm to persist and share data. And both of those apps are staged and running on the pair runtime. They can be run peer to peer between machines, and then they can connect peer to peer and persist between machines. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Pair Runtime Development moves fast. So come chat with us on Keat and share your feedback. There's an invite in the description and on pairs.com. Remember, the future is peer to peer and the future is now.